Hello friends, today we are going to cover the normal tangential coordinate system of the curvilinear motion analysis. So let's see what is our learning objective for today. Of course we are in still curvilinear, curvilinear motion system. We are going to cover what or how can we perform kinematic analysis using normal and tangential coordinate system when to apply NT coordinate system because we have learned rectangular now we are learning NT and we also have polar or cylindrical coordinate system so which or when we are going to use um, NT system and we will just solve one problem fundamental problem and we will uh, finish so when to use normal tangential coordinate system for curvilinear motion so the travel path has to be known. Most of the cases when the travel path is known or the radius of curvature is given, you are more likely to use NT system. When we tell that uh, travel path is known, what it means is that the equation of this curved path is given. Y equals to 0.4x squared, for example. And then um, you can find the radius of curvature and then use NT coordinate system. Um, so on the image here on the right if you see this is the travel path, path the green line and excuse me the particle is at this point and um, at that instant if you draw a circle that's of the, and the radius of that circle will be the radius of curvature at that point. So the radius of curvature is not constant throughout the path. It is about only at an instant. If the particle is here, you will have a different radius of curvature and this is the equation. It looks complex but it is very easy. This is the equation to find the radius of curvature at any point, any instant, any coordinate and of course we are using x, y. Um, so again, if the particle is at here and also in these cases, Velocity is always tangent to the path at that point we know. Now we will also have, for acceleration, we will have normal and tangential coordinate. We're going to talk about that right now. So again, uh, we start with our velocity. What is the magnitude of the velocity? The magnitude we know if we know um, the position, change in rate is um, we can, if we take first derivative, you can get the velocity and that will be the magnitude. What is the direction of velocity at any instant, any point on that path? Well, it's easy because at any point, if you draw a tangent on that curve, you will get the direction of velocity. So if you know the path equation, again, y equals to something x, fx. If you take first derivative, that will give you the direction, that will give you the tangent and will be the direction of um, v. You have to take um, tan inverse and then you will get a uh, direction of velocity. So how about the acceleration? Acceleration, we say it has two components, tangent and normal. The tangent is again by definition. If you take the derivative of the velocity, you will get the um, tangent acceleration. Again, it will be tangent on that path. What would be the normal? Normal by name, it is normal to that tangent. So it will be 90 degree on the tangent so this angle is 90 degree and it is um, acting always acting towards the center of curvature and again um, this is the time rate change of direction of the velocity so you see for a tangential acceleration we take first derivative for a normal acceleration there is no derivative form of velocity it depends only on the change in the direction of velocity and it is can be calculated using this equation. How we get this equation? Those There is separate video for that derivation. Okay, so these are the equation for NT system and this is the equation for radius of curvature. And once you have two components, again, how do you find um, um, the magnitude of two components, we know it from our statics, if we take uh, Pythagorean law, um, 
a square root of tangential and normal, uh, a square of tangential and normal, and take a square root of this, and you can get the um, magnitude of the acceleration. So, point of focus is that the normal component, again, the tangential part, we know it's tangent. The normal component of the acceleration, most of often some students um, forget or um, confused about which direction should it be towards the center or outward. Well, by definition, we say it is towards the center of the curvature. But the question comes, why normal components of acceleration acts towards the center of curvature? Why? Again, we start with the definition, a n v square over the rho. Easiest way to uh, remember or define um, or explain is that if you think it's a curvilinear path, right? Uh, so there's the curve here at this point. If your particle is at here, the radius of curvature is here, not here because it's the curve. So the radius of curvature, center of curvature would be here. If you draw the tangent component of the acceleration, tangent to that point, normal would be perpendicular. So the acceleration would be towards the center, and this is the resultant acceleration. If you would have drawn the normal outward, you will have the resultant which direction? This direction. That means your particle should move this way, not this way. So there is no way that the normal component can be this way because the path is this direction. So it has to be inward to keep maintaining this path. The acceleration has to be towards this way so the, the particle can maintain this path. Again, if we move to this point, the tangent is again tangent to that point. The normal has to be towards the center of curvature. And the resultant is towards this direction. If, if you draw this normal component outward, your resultant would be this direction. That means your particle may likely to move this direction, which is not. The path is this direction, so it has to be towards the center. Simple way to remember. Um, and if your particle is in on a straight line, there is no term normal part. It's only the tangential part. So let's see a little more complex explanation of um, how can we say or why the normal component is always toward the center of curvature. Uh, before that, um, since the normal component is always toward the center, it is often called the centripetal acceleration or center seeking acceleration. So it is always seeking the center. Um, so another way to see if you see this curved path or circular path actually and then different position of the particle it's rotating along this um, direction so you have the tangent at each four point and the normal is always perpendicular to that tangent now at it at any instant so for example at this point um, you can say the first the tangent point is the initial velocity and after a certain small time difference, delta, e, there is a change in angle. It is almost there, but a little change towards this one. The next tangent is like this. So this is delta theta. This angle is delta theta, which is your, for example, your final velocity. And this is the change in velocity. Okay. So again, remember the scenario, uniform circular motion. It's uniform circular motion, meaning that the tangent at each point on the circular path it has to be same otherwise there we will not be uniform so if we assume that scenario that means the magnitude of vi and vf is the same now let's take this triangle and enlarge it for analysis so again your vi is this direction the tangent vf is slightly changed dt and the angle changes d theta, and this is the direction the vector is um, del v. So again, change in velocity is what? Acceleration. So d, t, d theta, if it tends to zero, so um, d theta, if this d theta is tends to zero, 
zero, what is this angle? Remember, the constant tangential component, because it's a uniform circular motion, that means the magnitude of VI and VF are the same. So it's a triangle where these two arms lengths are the same. They are not different. So what the condition for trigonometry? This angle opposite to this arm would be equals to this angle opposite to this arm because these two arms are the same. Now by triangular formula, the summation of all three angle is what? 180 degree. If d theta, this theta is almost zero, we can assume that summation of this angle and this angle is 180 degree. That means two same angle is 180. So one of them, if I say this one is phi and this one is phi, so one of them would be 90 degree. That means this angle has to be 90 degree. And this is the um, arm which represents change in velocity, and change in velocity is acceleration. And um, um, and so that directional change would be the acceleration of normal acceleration component, and which is perpendicular towards uh, perpendicular of the tangent. So that's why it will be perpendicular to the tangent and towards the center. So this is um, the simple two different way to remember why the normal component of acceleration acts towards the center of curvature. So let's see um, a simple pro fundamental problem and then we'll finish. Um, the problem you see on the image, there's a block coming down. The path, the curv curvilinear path is given y equals to 0.4x squared. And also saying that at point A, at that point, V equals to the velocity at that point is 8 meter per second. And it is also said that at that point, the acceleration is 4 meter per second is squared. And it's asked us to find acceleration. So what's the point? It already said that there is acceleration at that point, 4 meter per second is squared. And it is again asking us to find acceleration. Because it is traveling in a curvilinear path, this acceleration has to be a component of the total acceleration, maybe tangential or normal, we'll see. So then the final acceleration would, so this is one component of the acceleration, the final would be, the actual acceleration magnitude would be different. So let's see how we can approach this problem. Um, if we see it is a kinematics problem, there is no force involved, is a particle motion problem. We're not worrying about the dimension of the of the object of the particle. Can we which coordinate system we're going to use? Rectangular, normal, tangential. As we say, the way easiest way to solve a problem that is the path is known is normal co tangential coordinate system. And also we are asked about a scenario at an instant. What happened at that po particular point? So these are the scenario where you, you choose to use a normal tendon shear coordinate system. Hence, uh, for anti system, once you decide that you're going to use anti coordinate system, um, normal and tangential coordinate system, um, these are the equation that we have. Um, so let's start solving. First, we have to find radius of curvature. If it's not given, but the path is given, how we can use this equation to find those. We need the first derivative for this part, second derivative for this part. If we take first derivative of this equation, you can get 0.8x. If you take the second derivative, you can get 0.8 because second derivative x will be uh, gone. Now, dy over dx, um, if you plug point, um, x point so if we want to find the value of dy over dx because our point of interest is only at point a so if you plug uh, that point x is 2 meter so if you plug 2 meter you, you will get dy dx at point a which is 1.6 and this one is already a number so um, what we have to do is that um, plug those values here. 
this will be 1.6 this will be 0.8 you can get the row 8.396 try yourself and match the result um, once you have that you know this is the acceleration it has two component normal and tangential so the normal we know that the equation is v square over rho v is given at that point as 8 meter per second rho we just figured it out so if you take the derivative um, if you plug into the equation you can get the normal component remember the tangential component is already given so once you have the normal and tangential the magnitude is easy to find and it will be 8.61 check your answer so that's our answer we can also find the angle the direction of acceleration remember our normal is towards the center tangent is this direction the actual direction of the acceleration will be somewhere this so we need to find the angle you can find the angle using phi how again you know the y component and x component if you take tan inverse of y component over x component you can get the angle so that is all um, for today um, we have solved the NT system for curvilinear motion. Um, thank you for watching. Next, we're going to move forward to polar and cylindrical coordinate system. Till then, see you.